Okay, so we're going to go ahead and finish up the Reagan presidency, which was from 1980 to 1988, by um, just talking about how people, a lot of people say that um, he, he deserves credit for the fall of communism because of his strong stand uh, on <clears throat> defense support of democracy. Others believe Reagan benefited from a weak Russian uh, economy and Gorbachev's reform efforts. You have to understand um, that the Cold War has been going on since 1945, and multiple different measures, or multiple different concepts and, and things have been put into place to weaken the, uh, the Soviet Union. The real thing that um, hurts the, the Soviet Union, two things that hurt the Soviet Union the most, um, the first is you know the space race, which we'll talk about more when, we're, when we um, cover just the Cold War, but um, the space race and the arms race forced the Soviets to spend crazy amount of money uh, amounts of money, excuse me, on weapons and uh, and rocket technology, which it simply could not sustain. And so the United States knew we could outspend them, and so we did that, and so it weakens it so much to um, the point where it's going to collapse. Okay, um, and so I I would say it's a it's a culmination that the the collapse of the United States uh, of the Soviet Union is a, is a culmination of all the policies um, taken to weaken the Soviet Union. And so that's my stance, but. Anyways, you may believe that other, I mean, there are a plethora, there are millions of people who believe that Reagan is the reason that the uh, Soviet Union collapsed. Okay, this is the second reason. The United States supplied, um, at, okay, well, long story short, the Afghans are going to invade the Soviet Union in 1979. They're going to be there until 1989 for 10 years. And so we're going to use this as payback um, for Vietnam and for Korea. Because the Soviets had been supporting the Koreans, or the North Koreans, and the, and the Soviets had been su supporting the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. And so we are going to use this situation in Afghanistan to bleed them out and get payback for Vietnam and Korea. So um, we are going to supply them with weapons and make it very, very expensive for them. So right here, um, I'm going to show you a few clips. Um, well, let me finish this slide, and I'll, I'll show you some clips. Um, in '85, uh, Gor Mikhail Gorbachev, leader of the Soviet Union, had advocated glasnost, which is openness, and uh, perestroika, which is economic restructuring. So, again, like he said in '84, or how he was trying to uh, start putting in capitalist um, economic policies, it's the beginning of the end. In '89, it does collapse. The fall of the Berlin Wall marked the end of the Cold War. That's very, very easy to remember. The Berlin Wall is, besides that, and uh, the Great Wall of China, there really aren't too many famous walls. So that's easy to remember. It's, it's a physical act. It, it collapses. We see it. It's, it's a symbolic collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War. Okay, and so with that, um, well, that, now it's going to talk about the, the collapse. So let's go ahead and look now at uh, how, and we already said that the space race was definitely one of the reasons. Um, here's Reagan being tough. Damn time. <laughs> In the 1950s, Khrushchev predicted, we will bury you. But in the West today, we see a free world that has achieved a level of prosperity and well-being unprecedented in all human history. In the communist world, we see failure. There is one sign that the Soviets can make that would be unmistakable that would advance dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Because that's definitely um, one of uh, his most famous quotes. Please, uh, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Um, I'd argue it's, it's almost as popular, or if not as popular, as 
Um, Nixon saying, I'm not a crook. But let's go ahead and look at how um, another reason that the, the Soviet Union collapsed is its failed invasion of Afghanistan that we supported. So let's go ahead and look at some combat footage. This video is kind of cool. It's two minutes. Um, it's got some like pop Russian music going on, but it's not too bad. Here, check it out. I thought this one had it. They were reasonably good at this form of action, usually targeting oil convoys as they hurried south to Kabul. This time, Afghan troops, whose lorry has been stopped, prepare to surrender. In their War of the Roads, the Mujahideen destroyed thousands of trucks along this vital supply route, causing severe fuel shortages in the capital. Its parachute retarded anti personnel bombs seek their impregnability. Increasingly heavy air attacks softened up the guerrillas' positions. The rocket packs that were in use. These Soviet designed 12.7 millimeter dash value of some parachute retarded cluster bombs mixed chemical and anti personnel explosives. Soviets dug in at the edge of the village, lay down covering fire. Okay, so there's one. And so this, they become effective, but if you, if you saw those helicopters, um, those are hind helicopters. They're very, very effective. And so the United States is going to step up their efforts to help the Mujahideen and give them uh, Stinger missiles. And this thing explains it all. One weapon could do the job. A handheld heat seeking missile called the Stinger. In the mid 1980s, the U.S. began covertly supplying Stingers to the Mujahideen. The balance of power began to shift. For a Stinger helicopter, is just a sitting duck. If it is within the range of the Stinger, then uh, the Stinger operator, I mean, will, uh, will aim it. Uh, aim at the stinger, then go for a super elevation, then he will make adjustments uh, according to the movement of the helicopter, then you, you fire, and you will see a big explosion. Flames and smoke will go up. For a period of about 100 days after the introduction of the stinger, the Soviets were losing one aircraft per day. One aircraft per day. This drove this into the high cost arena in a hurry. And as a matter of fact, the impact of these kinds of losses was, uh, was significant from a number of ways. Not only the hardware losses, but the fact that morale started to go down. Transport pilots wouldn't fly. For a period just prior to the removal and extrication of Soviet forces, Stinger gave Mujahideen a decided edge. The Soviets were vulnerable to the Stinger, but the Mujahideen had little to fear from Soviet smart weapons. After all, they had no tanks or aircraft for smart weapons to hit. The lesson of Afghanistan was bad news for U.S. military planners. If the Soviets could be neutralized by smart weapons, then so could we. If you have that feeling to sacrifice for your country, then I think uh, superpower or no superpower, it cannot stop you. If you're willing to die, that is the most important thing. But if with that feeling is combined with a smart weapon, then uh, the superpower is gone. We used to see 
uh, industrialized nations, if you want to go back to the 18th and 19th century, who were able to easily overwhelm primitive nations, and that's the way that empires were built. But today, there's not such a great difference. The gap is closing. Smart weapons are proliferating rapidly. Many of the stingers sent to the Mujahideen wound up in countries hostile to the U.S., like Iran. It would be easier to, to probably say who didn't have smart weapons and try to list all of those that do have smart weapons. Smart weapons are supplied by all the industrial nations in the world. Uh, for example, the United States, uh, Soviet Union, France, certainly Italy, Israel, uh, Brazil, South Africa, England, the list goes on and on. All of these countries are involved in it because it's very commercially attractive to them. Okay, I didn't see those pop-ups at the end. I don't even know what those even said. I was looking at uh, a message from another student. Okay, um, here we go. By 1986, the CIA was supplying the rebels with the Stinger missile. Capable of hitting a moving target five kilometers away. Five kilometers. Welcome back to the Real News Network. Jay joining us again are Paul Fitzgerald and Elizabeth Gould. The general dynamic stinger weighs just 15 kilograms, flies twice the speed of sound, and can reach aircraft flying five kilometers away. There was a perception in the CIA that the rebels were not technologically advanced enough to utilize such a weapon. But the guerrillas were quick learners, and the new missile proved deadly to the Soviet air crews. One resistance commander remarked, there are only two things we Afghans need, the Quran and more stingers. Well, you see, the uh, basis for 10 years of war didn't change, and uh, we used one and the same basis. So, however, you would uh, change the routes uh, leading out of the base and back to the base, the directions were still the same. Uh, so, Mujahids built up a fortified positions in the mountains on the general directions of our approach to the airfields and uh, our routes leaving the airfields. And especially when they got stingers, uh, they had people literally sitting with stingers, and if not in a day, then in a month, at this particular point, uh, an aircraft would appear and would be shot at. The most dangerous time was around 1986. We lost a third of our men and a half of all our helicopters. Most of the guys lost were in MI-8s because they are most vulnerable during landings and takeoffs in enemy territory. By 1987, flare dispensers had been added to most Soviet helicopters. They acted as decoys to the heat-seeking missiles. Fixed-wing aircraft, too, utilized this system. Despite this, in 1987 alone, more than 200 Soviet aircraft fell prey to the Mujahideen's new weapon. Okay, and so that's going to be the end of the, uh, of the lesson on Reagan. Um, These next president will be British soldiers in Afghanistan. Next president is going to be uh, George H. W. Bush is going to lead the United States into um, British lives are being lost. This okay, sorry. And so, as I was saying earlier, um, that ends the Reagan presidency from 1980 until 1988. We took a look at his domestic policies. We took a look at his foreign policy policies. Um, and so we'll head into George H.W. Bush with the next lesson. Uh, again, thanks so much for your attention. If you have any questions, please, uh, lesson, let me know, and I'll be gr happy to get back to you. Thanks, have a great day.